Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can invert images in Theoretics 1D, why you might need to invert your image, and the difference between inverting the colors on your image and inverting the measurements embedded within the image, aka the pixel data itself. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to dive into exactly why you need to invert your image or you may need to invert your image or you may wish to invert your image and how that relates to inverting the actual measurements that you get from the image and, and why sometimes the image that you capture when you imported it into the software, our software or anyone else's, sometimes those things don't line up. So I'm basically just going to give you a little crash course in data, pixel data and inversion and how that affects how the image is constructed. So I'm going to do this with an example. So I'm going to grab two images here one where the bands are white and one where the bands are black to kind of cover everyone's use case because in, in some in some experiments there are the bands are dark and in some experiments the bands are light. So if I just come across and open an image here, so you'll see within Windows I've got my two images. One is a white background with black bands and the other is the inverse. It's a white white bands on a black background. So there is a difference between inverting the color of your image and inverting the measurements that you take from the image and that's very important. So when you load the image into the software, what it does is if you're using a TIFF format, it's reading the metadata tags that are encoded alongside the TIFF to tell the software how to interpret that image. Now because our Fretix 1D software is open to all scanners, all manufacturers of scanners, we don't make capture software ourselves, although we could do. Um, because we don't control that section of the process, we actually don't control the tags that are put into the TIFF. And if they're not particularly, although TIFF is a standardized file type, the, the, the way the tags are handled and inserted into the image are not standardized across all manufacturers. That's a long way of saying, when you get an image and import it into the software, in some instances, the tags are going to tell you that the dark bands are, say, a, a high pixel value, or some are going to tell you they're a low pixel value, and we interpret our image based off pixel value, because ultimately that's what your experiment and our software will extrapolate your results from. The image is only there to inform kind of the user, the human component of this, and for you to define your lanes and bands, but after that, Everything is done on the raw pixel values because that data is more accurate than kind of light visible data, visible kind of bands and things. So in this instance, you can see uh, within our three views, our image is displaying correctly here. So we want dark bands on a light background. However, when we look at the pixel values, we can see that actually on our 3D view, and this is the this is the whole point of the 3D view is our image may be looking like it displays correctly here, but it's very easy to check on the 3D view that actually ah our data here in in the image our bands are actually showing as troughs instead of peaks, and we need them to be displaying as peaks because it makes the whole process a lot more accurate and feeds into all of the clever algorithms that we have for automatic lane detection and things like that. So what we've got here is this button which inverts the measurements. So if I click on this, you can see that I've now inverted my measurements. My bands are now showing up as peaks, which is lovely, fantastic. However, this has inverted the color of the image. So now we've got white bands on a black background. If I wanted to make that match up to what I saw on the scanner when I imaged my when I imaged my membrane or my gel, I would say to myself, well, that's not what my image looked like. I had white bands on a black background. This is wrong. Actually, this is correct. This is the way the data should be handled. It's just not looking the way you expect it to look. However, what you can do is then just change the colorway. So if you just select the, the different color map, it will flip the colors to match what you expected to see, what you saw on capture, but the actual image measurements, the, the raw values, the pixel values remain the same. So it's this concept of 
previously in, in our older softwares and in all of our competitors' softwares, the word invert has been used to just flip black and white. Within our software, we treat that as two separate things. Do you want to change the way the data is, or do you just want to change the way the, the, the image looks without changing the data? Um, because if you had this example and you inverted everything, you would end up with your troughs again and your, your data would not be very accurate. It would not feed in well to the algorithms that we have for automatic lane detection, automatic band detection and things like that. So I just wanted to highlight that to you and I've got another example here which goes the other way. And this is, I'm making this video in response to kind of, we get customer queries about this a lot and it's because of the terminology of invert. So this button used to say invert, but now it says invert measurements to try and let the user know that we're actually just inverting the, the numbers for the pixel values. So we're making high signal, high pixel value, background, low pixel value to match up with what you are seeing. So in this image, we had, I could just bring it up again. In this image, we have white bands on a black background, and that's what the user would expect to see to make sure that they're working on the correct image in the correct way. However, if you look again at the 3D view, you can see that we've got troughs where our signal is instead of peaks. So that tells you that you need to invert the measurements. But when you invert the measurements, or well, in fact, actually, in this case, when you invert the measurements, you do get the white bands on the black background again. So, but if you wanted to, so, so, so it works in this case, uh, and now the data aligns with what you're physically seeing, but you can always change the color of it. You can always change it to black, you can always change it to green, you can use any of our kind of funky heat, heat map modes and things like that to get a better contrast if you're kind of doing manual band editing and things like that if you want greater contrast on the edge of your bands. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make this video to kind of educate people that the word invert when it relates to image analysis has two parts. Are you inverting the image that you're looking at simply because it doesn't look the way you expect it to look but the data is correct? Or do you need to flip the values of the data to make your analysis more accurate? So all this button does, it does a suit, well, it does an inversion of the color, but you don't have to have that inverted color if you only need to invert the measurements. So you have full control over it. And like, like the vast majority of things within our software, you have full control over it. Um, but I just wanted to make this as a kind of educational tool that you need to make sure you know what you need to invert to know which tool to use on your image. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like a free trial of Alpharetics 1D software to try it out in your lab with your data, check out the links in the description below.